an imaginative meditation on the triumphal entry of Palm Sunday. So I'd invite you, first of all, to find a position for prayer, to make yourself comfortable in a position you can sustain for the next 20 minutes or so. And you can either close your eyes or look at the icon but probably best to close your eyes for this sort of prayer so we offer this time to god in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen glory to you O god glory to you Holy Spirit, assist us in our prayers. And as we seek to draw closer to our Lord in contemplating these events of his life, we pray that you be our guide. We surrender our hearts, our imaginations and our wills to you. Amen. And so before we begin our imaginary journey, let's first become aware of where we are now, of the sounds around us, of the quality of the light beyond our closed eyelids, of the sensation of our bodies clothing against our skin, the chair on which we are sat, The sensation of our own breath. And accepting things completely as they are. And allowing for the fact that sounds may occur during this time of prayer and we can just let them be. Now in your mind's eye, I invite you on a journey. A journey towards Jerusalem. On that first Palm Sunday. By this time in his ministry, Jesus was very well known and a figure of some controversy. It's the time of the festival and crowds have turned out. So perhaps imagining yourself tagging along with a group of disciples as they begin the journey to Jerusalem and they see the crowds and Jesus sends for a donkey to be brought. So watch now as things are prepared, the view across the valley to the city, the crowds making their way to festival. Some of the disciples approaching with the donkey. And Jesus. So in your mind's eye, you notice everything you can see. The view in the distance to the city, the milling crowds. That's what the sky is like today. The road itself. Notice if there are any trees or bushes or buildings. Notice the attitude of your fellow disciples. How do they seem? What's their mood? And what's yours? Notice Jesus too. The expression on his face, his manner. watch him as he mounts the donkey and you begin your journey down into the valley and then up to the city and as you make your journey the crowds become more and more busy more and more people around and of course Jesus is recognized 
because you can hear the sounds of the crowd, the footsteps, the conversations, the excitement. Perhaps there's particular smells in the air. Maybe you can smell the dust or taste it on your lips. Perhaps you can even feel the sun and its warmth. But notice how you feel to be walking along with this group and reflect on the sort of statement Jesus is making by riding into the city on a donkey, fulfilling prophecy that this is how the king will come. So without using any words, he makes a very definite statement. Maybe some people get it and others don't. Now as you stroll along, notice people's reactions to him. Notice their faces. Perhaps the sort of words, the manner in which they speak. And then someone first person perhaps throws a cloak into the road before the donkey or lays a branch from a tree perhaps a palm branch and others follow and before long the whole crowd is gathered and singing and rejoicing laying coats and branches before the Lord And you are one of his disciples. How do you feel now? Do you rejoice? Does it make you nervous? Is there confusion? So continue to look at this crowd as you stroll along. Not everybody is rejoicing and singing and laying palm branches. Perhaps some are hostile. This tumult of emotion and reaction. Perhaps others are indifferent. And whenever there's a big crowd or a big event, people come along for all sorts of reasons. Some people come because they're passionate about the reason for being there, passionate for a cause. Others come because they just enjoy a picnic, just a day out, and are indifferent to the reason for being there. Others come because they want to make mischief. Others because there may be a way to make a profit. What sort of person are you? What would cause you to turn out? The crowds perhaps make you feel uncomfortable and you just never go. Maybe you would have to be a really, really good reason. Or maybe you're the sort of person that would go for any reason at all. Just notice how you feel being here amongst this tumult of reactions and emotions. it excite you or frighten you? Do you wish you could be anywhere else but in this confusing crowd? Or are you really glad to be here, to share this moment? Just stroll along now behind the Lord and watch him. How does he react to people? What vibe does he give off? 
Is he happy or sad? Is he excited or resigned? Is this a job to be done? Or a moment to rejoice in? I notice too there may be people there who are completely distracted, who have other things on their minds. Perhaps life is full of challenges for them at the moment or whatever's going on around them, these momentous historical moments, they're so caught up with their own stuff that they miss what's going on. It just passes them by. They were there in body but completely miss the significance of the moment. Is that a danger for you? So strolling towards the city now. Being aware not only of yourself, but of your fellow disciples. How do they seem? How do they walk with vigour and energy? Or are some of them dragging their feet? What are their hopes for this moment? Jesus practically announcing himself as a king. But what sort of king? How is this going to end? Knowing that for religious festivals, the Romans also paraded into the city through a different gate. But they paraded in military might. And here Jesus comes with a band of fishermen on a donkey. What chance does he have to assert himself? What hopes and fears does he raise? Looking at the crowd once more, perhaps reflecting the lives they have, the homes they have left to be here today, their fears and hopes for life. How are these brought to the Lord? And how do you feel about them? Do you have compassion for them and sympathy? Or do they just annoy you or even cause a sense of revulsion in you, some of them? Be honest with yourself. Being part of this crowd today, what do you learn about yourself? And if you'd been there as part of this crowd on the first Palm Sunday, would you have been laying palms before Jesus, singing Alleluia, Hosanna? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Would you have been cynical, sceptical, indifferent, hostile, What do you think? Now perhaps you can walk alongside Jesus. Maybe it's your turn to lead the donkey.
perhaps you can use this time now to have a conversation with Jesus. Is there anything you'd like to say to him or ask him? Is there anything you think he'd like to say to you? So just spend a little time now, just you and Jesus strolling along that road, alone in the midst of the crowd. With all the milling around going on about you, but this time is just for you and Jesus, making that journey together. Perhaps something about this walk with Jesus has struck you, stuck in your mind. A thought and an idea, something perhaps you'd like to take away with you from this meditation. Perhaps even you'd like to make a little resolution for yourself. Something you don't want to forget. Perhaps there's something like that, perhaps not. But maybe have a moment now to consider what you'd like to learn from this or remember or resolve. Or maybe it's just something you can take into your day to mull over, turn over in your mind. Perhaps something you've learnt about yourself. Or perhaps a new insight into this gospel event. Or maybe just the sense of having met Jesus in this scene. And perhaps seen him in a new way. Consider that for a moment now. This was a moment in history that Jesus consciously enacted and fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah. And in so doing, people were challenged to respond to it. And that challenge remains for us and for everybody. How do we respond to this moment when Jesus presented himself in this way as the Messianic King come into the messianic city will we receive him into the city of our hearts and our lives to dwell there as king will we completely miss the significance of this moment because we are distracted or will we be hostile and want to turn him away the same questions remain for us 
as for those people who were there on the first Palm Sunday. Will Jesus dwell among us as our Lord and King? Will he be your Lord and King? So rather than answer this question in your head, as you stroll along with Jesus in this crowd, just notice how you feel now and be honest about how you feel and offer those feelings to Jesus. Lord Jesus, on the first Palm Sunday you journeyed to the city of Jerusalem. In so doing you offered yourself to the people to be their messianic king. You come to us every day, journeying to our hearts, journeying into our lives, offering us the chance to receive you and to enthrone you as our Lord and King. We pray that our hearts may be made into fit dwelling places for you, that we may be numbered amongst those who sang Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. So when you're ready and in your own time, you may open your eyes and bring this meditation to an end.